All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this Dell Inspiron 5570. Um, on here it says uh, model P75F001. Um, so first what you wanna do is just remove and undo all the screws on the bottom. So the ones close to the hinge, these three, they'll actually stay in there. These screws don't come completely out. Um, so just unscrew them. So those three, and then the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Once you undo all those screws, keep them in order because some are different size. Um, what you want to do is, as you can see, when you open it up, there's a little. Let's see if you can see that, but there's a little gap here. So get your pry tool or fingernails in that gap, and then just pry it open. So I like to use my fingernails because while I'm prying it, I can actually push with my thumb and that flexes the case so that it undoes the clips without um, causing any damage. All right, so just go around just like this. All right, continue going all the way around. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. All right. All right, once you go all the way around, the back ones come up pretty easily, the ones near the hinge, and then you can just pop the cover off just like this. So here you can see, I'm gonna clean out the dust. Usually I'll just use a toothbrush like this, blow it out, and then I have an air blower that I'll blow it out, but I don't wanna get all the dust in my work area, so I'm gonna leave it like that for now. All right, all right, so we'll set that aside. Then here you can see there's the hard drive. It's a 2.5 inch SATA um, hard drive. You can upgrade this to an SSD if you want. Um, here you can see the battery. The battery connects with this connector here. So usually when you start messing with things inside the computer, you'll want to disconnect the battery and then you'll want to um, press and hold the power button to drain any power. So what you do here, um, at the end of the connector here, just use your fingernails and then you can kind of just wiggle it side to side, pulling it out of the connector. So you just slide it out just like that, okay? So let me see, I'm gonna take this out just so you can see what's underneath. All right, so the battery is held in place with four screws it looks like. So keep all these screws in order. All right, so this one I'm opening up um, to change the hard drive to an SSD. Um, the original hard drive actually failed, so might as well. All right, it looks like there's also an M.2 slot. Um, I'm not sure if it supports PCIe and VME SSDs, um, but these slots will usually, all of them will support the M.2 SATA SSDs, all right? So there you go, there's the battery. Clean the dust off of this one. So here you can see battery model. The model number of the battery, I don't know if you can see, is WDX0R. Okay, so that's the battery model. All right, I don't see any other stuff that's needed on here. Um, I guess there's the cable. I don't know if you need that information. Hopefully it's not blurry. I can't see what's going on, but there's the cable, okay just in case you need that if you broke it. I mean, if you broke it, you have the cable model. Okay, so then there's the hard drive held in place by these four screws. All right, so the bracket is held down with four screws and then the screw is held into that bracket um, with more screws. So I'm gonna change the hard drive to an SSD now. All right, just remove the four screws from there. Make sure these screws, um, the screwdriver, if it's not getting a good grip, make sure to put a lot of pressure downwards. You don't want it to skip in the um, in the screw and then strip out the screw. Okay, so to remove the hard drive, once you remove those, just go underneath the little metal bracket and pry it up. All right, and then to get this piece off, um, just use your, oh, this one, the black part, it's gonna come out. So you're gonna have to be careful. What I'll do is undo this latch here. Hopefully it's not held with adhesive. Okay, it's not. So here, this connector, because they put this black piece here, um, it's gonna be difficult to remove. It looks like they have this gray part tab here sticking out on the back, hopefully you can see. So you can actually pull it out that way. 
um, but I found uh, once you get a little gap here it's best to kind of just slide your nail in between there and then you can actually pull the connector out that way. Um, if you pull this black piece you can actually separate it and damage this cable so just be careful with that. Um, try and use this tab this would help okay all right so once you got that you can see the hard drive the brackets held in with the screws on the side here so I'm going to take these out um, it's I don't think you'll be able to find like the older fat um, hard drives where they're I think 9.5 millimeters thick um, this laptop you have to use the thinner drives I think they're seven millimeters thick um, so Make sure most SSDs these days, um, unless you're finding like a really old used one, they're going to be the thinner thinner type so you don't have to worry. But if you're getting like an old spinning drive or a really large capacity, make sure it's not like the 9.5 millimeter thick drive. Okay, so just remove it like that. Um, if you see the bracket, the smaller connector for the data is going to be on the right hand side when you're looking at it this way. So let's do that with the SSD. All right, so I'm gonna pop out the SSD. As for SSDs, if you wanna upgrade to um, the brands I recommend, um, if price doesn't matter, go with Samsung, um, or if they're close in cost. If not, I would recommend SanDisk, Kingston, Crucial, and I think that's it. So those are the brands that I found that work the best. Um, can go with other ones. Um, Western Digital bought Sandisk, so I would think their quality is very similar. Um, but yeah, um, okay. But the ones that I've seen to have good track records are those Kingston, Sandisk, Samsung, and Crucial. Okay, so just put the new hard drive in or the SSD, redo all the four screws. All right. There you go. I mean, this is an easy part, so I probably don't even need to show this, but let's do it anyways. Might as well. All right. So there you go. Oops. Okay. Tighten up the screws. We're going to put the hard drive connector back on, and then we're going to put the hard drive back in place okay so put the hard drive connector back in just like that slide it in and snap that down all right there we go put these screws back in all right so as you can see um, while I'm putting this back there's the speaker here the cable runs along to this speaker, and then both speakers are connected to the motherboard or the logic board here. Um, again, there's an M.2 uh, SSD slot, so if you wanted, you can upgrade to one of those. I don't know if it supports um, the PCIe NVMe um, SSDs, but um, that, I guess you'll have to look it up online. Um, but for sure, it'll support the SATA ones. All right. Then you got the RAM here. So the RAM is 8 gigs, PC4, 2400T. So if you need the RAM, um, I'm gonna, I'll take it out and then do a close up, but let me put back this last screw. All right, so here you can see the RAM. Okay, hopefully it's visible. Um, 8 gigs, PC4, 2400T, all right. When you take it out, make sure you pull these two things to the side so it pops up like that, and then you just push it down. Okay, make sure to put it at an angle to when you put it back. Um, there's another slot, so if you add another slot of the same matching RAM, you'll get dual channel speeds. It'll be a little bit faster. Um, you got the keyboard connector here, so just like the all these other connectors are the same, you just flip up the latch and then push it back down. Okay, then you got... Um, the keyboard backlight cable, the touchpad or trackpad cable. Um, you got this cable here for the USB board and the CMOS battery. They have a spot here for the CMOS battery, so I don't know why they stuck it down here. Um, but maybe it's because they reuse this case for multiple laptops. It looks like 
um, in some models they actually have a CD drive here um, so they actually have a little slot here for the optical disk drive um, cable and then it looks like there's some screw holes here that it will hold that connector um, then you got the LCD connector here um, if you're ever taking out the LCD connector be very sure to um, hold the power button after removing the battery to drain any power because sometimes it can short the, um, the LCD connectors if you don't do that okay so let's see what else you got the power button here um, and the cable just runs along under to here um, I'm not sure what this little cables for let me see if there's anything um, when you have the cover off also because screws are um, not holding not as many screws are holding down the hinge just be careful when you open up the laptop okay so I don't see anything there Maybe it's, hmm, okay, there's another board up there, so let's see what that, there's the home button, or uh, the power button, and the fingerprint sensor, and then, I'm not sure what that board is for, maybe, I don't see LED holes or anything there, so, I'm not sure, there's a board here that, um, that other wire's connected to, I don't know what that's for, though, um, so yeah, one wire's for the power button and then one wire's for that. I'm not sure. Fingerprint, I guess FP is fingerprint. Oh, so maybe the fingerprint sensor is part of that, I guess. I don't know, because it looks like it's all part of the power button. Um, but yeah, the CPU, um, the processor is soldered to the board, just like on most modern laptops these days. Then you got the fan connector here. Um, three screws holding it down. Um, let's see, anything else I got? Um, then the wireless card, there's this little plastic bracket, so you have to take the screw out, and then to get the antennas out after you remove the plastic bracket, you just lift from the tail, the antenna will pop up at an angle like this, and then to put it back, just make sure it's lined up properly, and then push it flat down on top. Okay, um, it looks like that's pretty much it for this laptop. It's pretty simple to open up and everything um, but yeah oh there's also the DC jack um, connector here for the charge port so if for some reason you break your charge port you can replace it pretty easily um, you just have to move the hinge out of the way take the screws out and then just open up the hinge part way and yeah that's pretty much it hopefully this video helped if it did please like and subscribe because that'll help me um, if you leave a comment, for some reason, YouTube doesn't um, alert me of all the comments now, so I always thought that um, the people making these videos were just ignoring people's comments, but it turns out YouTube doesn't actually send um, an alert for all the comments. So if you need me to respond to a comment or you have any questions, um, the easiest way would be to um, go in my YouTube info and then I have contact information there you can email me call me text me um, I can even show this uh, so there's that hopefully my phone won't blow up because I do this as an actual business um, so if it's not important um, yeah just message a whole bunch of times on YouTube and hopefully I'll get to hopefully I'll see that message um, because if you call and text too much, um, uh, it's going to make it hard for me to do my regular business. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped again and thanks for watching. Bye.